Oh yeah, we test cameras, we test lights, we don't clean the whiteboard, not for this channel. CrowdStrike. Oh, CrowdStrike, how I love thee. Thank you for proving my point, point that I've been making. Listen, this is not hard. Let me be very clear. I'm a release engineer, among other things. Used to do tests before release. You should try it sometime, then you wouldn't have the CrowdStrike problem. You'd say, Mark, they did test, but they didn't test. Looking at a file is not a test, okay? There's only one way to test software, it's to run it in production. You know what other way to test software there is? None, it doesn't exist. <laughs> there aren't magical, nifty new ways to test software. You can't look at a file and tell what it's gonna do on a computer. Programmers should know this. Software engineers should know this. They screw it up all the time. Not hard. I know that too, because I'm a programmer. I'm a software engineer. I know eight programming languages. Eight. Not one. Not two. Not three. That won't do it. I know enough assembly language to read it and probably write a little bit of reasonable code. I know enough Lisp to read it and to write a little bit of reasonable code right? But aside from those two, I know eight programming languages. I've done this before. I've seen software work where you didn't have 20 updates every freaking two days for a month on 120 apps. I, I don't even want to do the math on that. What, what the hell are they doing? I haven't noticed a single app be different, except they crash more. Is that better? I, I don't think they're supposed to crash like CrowdStrike. You may say, oh, well, if CrowdStrike had tested on release and they still had a bug. No, you test your environment. You don't rely on your vendors to test their software in your environment. Oh, that, that won't work. No one does what Verizon does. Verizon didn't get hit by CrowdStrike. Ah, uh, do you know why? Because they do test on release. They're like, oh, our vendor released a bug. All the updates are shut off in their production environment. Every single production machine they have shut off. No automatic updates from the outside. Not Microsoft, not CloudStrike, not SolarWinds, not anyone. They don't do it. It's not that hard. Five, five and a half billion dollars thereabouts just for the Fortune 500s in losses. But they don't let anybody update their production environment. They, it's their production environment. They control it. That's the correct answer. And you can argue that had CloudStrike tested at all, they would have immediately found the problem. Yes, they would have, right? And uh, they wouldn't have released it to the customers. Also true. That's why you do test before you release. It's not that hard. Run the damn software on a running machine. Don't have an analyzer look at a file, okay? That's not a test. That's an analyzer looking at a file. And you know what you can't do? is tell whether or not something runs by looking at it. I think I said this earlier. Software engineers should know this. They screw that up all the time. This isn't that hard. Why are we making it hard? Why are we allowing entire infrastructure to be completely and utterly destroyed by a third-party vendor that isn't doing anything correctly in software engineering? Anything at all, by the way. Because the whole industry is completely destroyed by agile, by this idea that you only need software engineers, by cybersecurity. You can't separate security, architecture, and engineering. You can't do it. It will not work, okay, ever. You need to have those components, but they need their input needs to be long before a line of code is written. I mean that technically. It doesn't mean you can't write any lines of code to figure out what your customers want. That's what rapid application development was originally intended to do. You build a mock-up in a very slow and sloppy language like Python, which it is. Also, I use Python all the time. I love Python. Python's great. Uh, also not for product, certain types of production code. Other types of production code is perfectly fine for. It's fantastic. Love Python. Use it all the time. Okay, infrastructure code, use it all the time. Also not the best tool for either of those things. You know what it's great at? 
building a mock-up of something so you can put it in front of a customer and find out if what the customer told you for specifications is anywhere near what they expected because customers don't know what they want. And the industry for decades has been assuming customers know what they want, they can tell you what they want, and when you deliver what they told you, all of this is impossible, by the way, that, that you'll be done. And that's not the world we live in. It's never been the world we've lived in. It will never be the world that we will live in. It's just not the way things have ever worked or could ever work. Sorry. There's no reason for the CrowdStrike error. After solar winds, you would think someone would have learned the lesson. Solar winds is the same problem. Same problem. Oh, we just let vendors update our production environment. I don't care if the vendor's Microsoft. You know who invented release without test? Microsoft. They're the famous company that just started sending software out without ever testing a line of it to make sure any of it worked. That's why they have all these OSs and they have two working OSs, two, Windows XP and Windows 7. NT's garbage always was, always will be, always will have been, right? All their other, but Windows 11, complete trash. How do I know? CloudStrike. You can't know that. 25 reboots to get into safe mode because they took safe mode F8 key out of their boot sequence. Oh, oh, well, they've got more secure boot hardware. Listen, I don't know why you think you need to secure the boot sequence on your freaking computer. If I have your computer, I have the data, okay? You can secure it. You can put a freaking encrypted hard drive on it all day long. I have your data. Sorry, that's never going to change. You can put whatever you want on the damn machine. That's never going to change, ever, right? You can come up with a new, cool, secure boot protocol that causes nothing but problems, gives you the appearance of security, and increases your security by a tiny amount that isn't enough to deter anybody from just taking your damn hardware, encrypted or not, and stealing it all, taking all the data. because. People are doing that now. They have been since the beginning. Sorry. You can't. You can't. Physical security is physical security, and there's no substitute for it. Never has been. There never will be. There never can be because there's a special quality to material that can't be reproduced in software or it can't be secured in software. It's not possible. It may take longer, but I have your data and you don't have your data. Maybe that's enough. Maybe I don't need to see your data. I can just destroy your data and totally screw you. UEFI doesn't fix that problem. Encrypted hard drives don't fix that problem. That problem is not fixable. You just have to be more careful with your damn hardware. And for what? So you could take the freaking F8 key out of my boot sequence and ensure that your automatic go into safe mode thing would never work because your software engineers don't test anything. And so, yeah, it's CrowdStrike's fault. Absolutely, they did the dumbest thing you could possibly do by not even testing the stuff before, before they tried to release it. They just looked at the file with a file validator that didn't work. Who validates the file validator? Oh no, who vile? validates the thing that validates the file validator. Oh no, who, yeah, that goes on forever, obviously. Or you could not run that at all and just freaking test it on a release system and see if it crashes. That will find all the bugs and a file validator theoretically can't. Not theoretically, though. Mathematically impossible. Oops. Can't be done. Mathematically impossible. And to the extent you could extract the same rules out of the file value, why would you do that? You're just running the exact same code. Why not run the whole suite of integrated code instead of a subset of code? Because the suite of integrated code may have other bugs that mean a valid file still causes a crash because that happens all the time. So I know instead of adding a step, why don't you just do the one necessary step and skip all the previous steps? I have never seen or heard of an error, any kind of error 
including from you know so-called unit tests that couldn't be found better and quicker in a release test because it can't be true it can't exist you run a full suite of release regressions you'll find all the bugs and your code when you release it will never be broken for your customers ever ever except for new conditions that your software engineers didn't think of you're never getting rid of that problem though at least you don't have the problem of inserting a bogus file that is observably incorrect to the human eye into your system and crashing i don't know millions of computers which then take 25 15 three reboots to work the irony here is the day before CrowdStrike hit, my laptop, my personal laptop, the one I'm using to make this video, ran into a problem and it went into the blue screen mode. And I went on my phone and my cousin was there and he's a big Microsoft guy and I've just dealt with Microsoft for years at the highest level. I've talked to their highest engineers. They're morons. They're, they don't know anything about their operating system. And look, look it's a big operating system. <laughs> Fair enough. But like, should kind of know a little bit more about it than I do when I don't have access to your code. My laptop didn't work. And I was like, oh, here's a screenshot from Windows 11. There's my laptop that runs Windows 11. It's never run any other operating system. It came from the fact with Windows 11. These two things are not the same. Well, this is a Microsoft. It says Windows, that says when the screens are the same. Well, I don't know what to tell you about that, other than Microsoft doesn't seem to know what screens are in their code. They don't know what physical pixels come out on the screen from the code that they wrote. I don't know what else to tell you. That is a true statement. Uh, that's not the first, second, or third time that's happened. I go online for other things all the time and they say, click here, click here. And I'm like, I don't have those options. Are you sure? You oh yeah, it says Windows 11. It's definitely close. Looks like Windows 11. It's not Windows 10. It's not Windows 8. That's for sure. But it's also not what's on my screen on my Windows 11 laptop. I don't know what to tell you about that. It appears as though different people have different stuff, even though it's labeled the same stuff. And so I decided to poke around with their little automatic system. And what I discovered was that you could roll back the last updates. I said, you know what? Maybe this is an update problem. Roll back the last update. And I went, bang, just like that. And I went, all right. Well, I know a few things about Microsoft from decades of dealing with these idiots. Uh, they don't roll anything back in half a second. And it was exactly half a second. Okay. Because they can't even install an update on Windows 11 in under something like 20 minutes on this thing. And this is a lightning fast top end computer. I don't know what's up with that. But also, they don't seem to be able to, to install anything in a reasonable amount of time. Like copy a few files, make a couple of registry changes. I don't, why would this take more than a minute? Maybe if you were being slow about it, I have no idea. So I know they can't roll it back in half a second didn't change the condition of the machine. So I, I ran a few more tests, similar things. The conclusion that I came to, and this is purely speculation on my part, although decades of experience, is that they have a rollback list and it must be able to be populated through some bug or other with empty items, which is why it takes 25 reboots to roll back the CrowdStrike change which makes absolutely no sense, I'm well aware, but also seems to have happened. I don't know what brand of bugs they put in the operating system somehow that they never tested and never knew anything about, but obviously this operating system is as buggy as the day is long. So blame CrowdStrike for sure, but also one reboot should have fixed this, guys. And if one reboot had fixed it, because if Microsoft had done their job, the CrowdStrike thing wouldn't have been that big a deal. Still would have been a pain in the ass. Still would have cost a lot of money, but it wouldn't have caused days and days and days and days of outages. But Microsoft can't write code. Microsoft has never once tested a line of code before they've released it to a customer. 
And they bragged about it when they started that process. And the rest of the industry picked it up. $5.5 billion. Boom. Just like that. Thanks, Microsoft. 